Precocious puberty is a common presentation to the pediatricians and often presented as a diagnostic challenge. A comprehensive understanding of physiology and pathology and its interaction is essential to achieve a successful outcome with regards to evaluation and management. Talking about the what, when and how of precocious puberty. All of you can go and have a look at our website, learning.gosociety.in, which has got a lot of resources related to pediatric endocrinology, including precocious puberty. From a pathophysiological perspective, pubertal regulation involves the three major organs, the hypothalamus, pituitary, and the gonads, and the three major hormones, GnRH from the hypothalamus, gonadotrophins from the pituitary, and the sex hormones, estradiol and testosterone coming from the gonads. The abnormalities in which may result in the development of precocious puberty may come right from the hypothalamus, which is the central precocious puberty characterized by an elevated level of luteinizing hormone. This form of puberty is associated with enlargement of testicular volume, which is the most important sign of precocious puberty in sight in boys, and a concordant pattern of a breast development followed by vaginal bleeding or menarche, which happens approximately around two years from the onset of thelarche. They could also have a large number of idiopathic forms, but as discussed, boys and girls younger than six years have a higher chance of having an organic pathology of central precocious puberty. There could also be an increased production of androgens via the adrenals and the testis or estrogen via the ovaries, which will result in what is known as peripheral or gonadotropin independent precocious puberty, which is associated with a LH level, which is significantly below the detectable range. These forms of precocious puberty in boys are easily identified by the small testicular volume and in girls by the discordant pattern of pubertal development where significant amount of estrogen causes a, a sudden increase in breast development and menarche or vaginal bleeding which happens pretty close in a discordant pattern less than one year difference between the breast development and the vaginal bleeding. Boys are more likely to have a peripheral precocious puberty than girls but general puberty is also common and large number of it will have an organic pathology. So if you have a boy who comes to you with precocious puberty, be wary because that may be indicative of an organic pathology. Again, CNS lesion is a prime thing that you need to worry about. Importantly, peripheral precocious puberty is significantly increased uh, numbers in boys and that's largely because of adrenal causes like 21 hydroxyl deficiency. If you have a unilateral testicular enlargement, think of a testicular tumor. While if you have an intermediate testis with isolated Leydig cell increase, think of a HCG producing tumor or testotoxicosis. So precocious puberty is defined in boys as the onset of pubic hair development or penile enlargement or testicular volume increase beyond the pubertal level of 4 ml before the 9 years of age. Most important thing to look at in a boy who comes to us with precocious puberty is the testicular volume. If the testes are bilaterally enlarged, it suggests a central form of precocious puberty. If they're very, very small, it suggests a peripheral form like congenital atrial hyperplasia. If they are intermediate to those, it means there is a Leydig cell hyperplasia that suggests a HCG dependent cause. While if there is a unilateral enlargement, it may indicate a testicular tumor. So the most important to look at in a boy who comes to us with, with precocious puberty is to look at the testicular volume to guide further evaluation and workup. So the approach starts with the LH level. If the LH is pubertal, more than 0.2 million units per liter, every boy with the precocious puberty, which is central, requires IMRI head. And often they will require a GnRH analog because the bone age advancement will be much more as compared to girls. In boys who have prepubertal LH, the next step is to look for the adrenal lesion. And importantly, this adrenal lesion may be missed on ultrasound. So we should ideally go for a CT scan to identify this adrenal carcinoma. If it's absent, and in either scenario, we should also get a 17 hydroxy progesterone level, which if high indicates congenital adrenal hyperplasia, the presence of hypertension in this scenario suggests a 11 hydroxylase deficiency. If 17 hydroxy progesterone levels are normal, we should then exclude our HCG producing tumor. If the HCG level is high, this suggests a HCG tumor and the need for careful evaluation of the abdomen, chest, and CNS to rule out those HCG producing tumor. 
However, if the boys have a normal 17 OHP, abdominal imaging, and HCG, the next step is to do a genetic study for LHCG receptor defect, which is testotoxicosis. So the evaluation is guided by a central versus peripheral. All boys with central precautions puberty will require a MRI. Those who have a peripheral form rule of CH, adrenal lesions, HCG producing tumor, and then finally testotoxicosis in that regard. So if you have an intermediate level, we can do a GNR stimulated level. If they go above five, this is more like a central cause. Below five, it suggests a peripheral form in that regard. So to put that in practice, we had this four-year-old boy with early puberty. And what we can see that there is a pubertal testicular enlargement. We should definitely look for central precautions puberty. The LH levels here are pretty high. So this is a very early onset, significantly elevated level of LH. Testosterone looks like a central cause. And as discussed in girls, we should do an MRI also here. And this was a hypothalamic hematoma. Again, a benign condition, no need for surgical referral. We can manage with GnRH analog in that regard. Seven-year-old girl and what we see here, seven-year-old boy and what we see is that the penile enlargement is significant while the testicular volume is less. So this points more towards a peripheral form of precocious puberty which was confirmed by the identification of low levels of LH and FSH and high levels of testosterone. What we are seeing here is that this is peripheral form. So the imaging showed adrenal enlargement bilateral and the 17 OHP levels were pretty high. So this is a classical presentation of congenital adrenal hyperplasia due to 21 hydroxyl deficiency. Remember, these individuals have advanced bone age and often when we start the treatment with hydrocortisone, there would be removal of the androgen-induced suppression of the central axis resulting in triggering of the central precocious puberty. So beware that once we start treatment, there could be enlargement in their testicular volume, which needs to be checked in that perspective. Eight-year-old boy with rapid pubertal development, so similar to the earlier cases as well, but again, the LH levels are low. So this is again a peripheral form of precocious puberty. Our aim would, of course, be to look at the adrenals. And this is what we are most worried about, a large adrenal carcinoma. Now, often, the size may be small, especially in the early pubertal development, we may miss adrenal carcinoma because they are not that large. So beware of our adrenal pathology, which could be sinister and cause early pubertal development in boys if it's very important to identify that in that setting. Another scenario, five-year-old boy with early puberty, again, the penile enlargement is significant. The testicular enlargement is not really commensurated, somewhere around three to four ml. And again, the LH is low. So this suggests the possibility of a peripheral form of precocious puberty. Further evaluation showed a normal CT adrenal and a normal 17 hydroxyprogesterone. The further workup was done, which showed a HCG level, which was high. So this is a classical presentation of a HCG producing tumor. We have a child who has a peripheral form of precocious puberty. The testicular volume is, however, slightly enlarged compared to the those which we see with CAH. And this is because of the Leydig cell hyperplasia. 17 OHP, adrenal imaging is normal. HCG level is very high. So this is classically a HCG producing tumor. And we need to be cautious about that. And we found a germinoma which was causing this in that scenario. Two-year-old boy with a significant enlargement of uh, penile length and testicular volume is again intermediate. So it's not commensurate with the level of pubic hair development or the level of penile enlargement. The LH level clearly in this scenario was low. So peripheral precocious puberty, high level of testosterone, CT scan, 17 hydroxyprogesterone and HCG, all normal. So now we're talking about a very early onset of peripheral precocious puberty. All the other factors are normal. This looks like a LHCG receptor defect activating mutation or testotoxicosis is what we need to evaluate and consider in this scenario. So we have been discussing about the approach pathways and the complexities in terms of evaluation and management. We have developed a, a, a puberty interpreter, which allows a mobile application based assessment of pubertal disorders based upon the input of few key parameters which will allow all the algorithms that we're talking about to really look at in terms of precocious 
and delayed puberty and this has been found to have a high level of concordance with clinical diagnosis.